I feel like you're too close. Are you too close? I feel like maybe the shot should be wider, but I can't, I can't tell. I don't know. I don't know. I give up. Hello and welcome to my April favorites video and welcome to my second attempt at shooting this video. I actually already shot this video and I did a whole section of the video on the Bare Minerals, Bare Sensuals palette and how much I like it because I was so sure that this was still available. Like I know I bought it at Winners, but I was sure I'd seen it at Sephora or on the Bare Minerals website or something and I don't see it anywhere. I don't see even any remnants of palettes that look like this on their site anymore. So uh, first thing I guess, I love this palette. I bought it at Winners. I use it every day, but uh, I'm not going to talk about it because you can't buy it anymore. <laughs> For those of you that uh, follow my channel and have for years, first of all, hi, I like you a lot. Um, I, April is a filler month, in my opinion. Like, unless your birthday's in April, like, what else happens in April? Not a whole lot. This year, Easter was in April, but who really cares about Easter? I mean, unless you're really religious, what is there at Easter? It's like a weird mishmash of Jesus and a bunny, and you don't really know what's going on. There are definitely some things I loved in April, and I, I saw a couple of movies, but that's about it. April is typically the month that I use to try to save money for Anime North in May, and then all the conventions that come after that. I did a really bad job of that this month. I didn't save anything. Uh, okay, great. So, first, let's start with hair, because obviously, an April favorite is Overtone. I'm still, like, it still blows my mind that Overtone, like, sent me two tubs of this. This tub is already pretty much gone. And by pretty much, I mean it's, it, it's gone. It just did me two tries, two, two, two hair goes, whatever. And it's been a little over two weeks since I last did it, so that's why my hair looks so faded and my roots are in so far. But I just bought a root touch-up kit that I wanted to try for a Tuesday review, so I wanted this to wash out. You, you know. So I love this. This is amazing. This smells good. It smells very minty, that's what it is. I couldn't quite put my finger on what kind of mint. It's like a spearmint, and I only know that because my mother hates the smell of mint, so every time I use this, she tells me that she wants to murder me. But for them to finally have a black shade of overtone, like, I am so excited. And for those of you that, that have asked me uh, how it fades, I've tried to respond to as many comments on that video as possible, but the nicest thing about it is it doesn't fade green. My black hair always fades green, and this fades ready purpley. Like, I'm sure you can see it on my roots now that they're sort of red purpley where they're not blonde. And that's how this fades, but I love that so much. It's so much better than the weird greeny blonde I was getting before. So this fades amazing. It makes my hair feel so nice. The color deposits is so great. Like, you should, you should probably be doing a hair mask every week or every two weeks anyway if you have color-treated hair like I do. So to have a hair mask that I use that has color in it, amazing. So once I uh, win the lottery or something, because I don't have any money right now, I'm gonna do an overtone order and reorder more of the blue daily conditioners because that really helps keep my color bright and more of these because I only have the one tub left and I have anxiety about it. As far as makeup goes, I really wanted to show you this. I think I used it in a video, but I don't remember. This is the Fenty Beauty Matchstick in the shade Amber. And I've been thinking about doing a Tuesday review on like literally just this matchstick because it is the most perfect pale skin contour ever. And I went back and forth with myself on this a lot because it was like, well, Abby, you had the Anastasia cream contour kit and you never use it. But I always talk myself into like, you know, the reason I never use the contour kit is because I had to dirty a brush. <laughs> And cleaning cream products out of brushes is so hard. Like, that's one of the main reasons I pretty much stopped wearing liquid foundation now that my skin is all right. It's like, ugh, I don't have to clean the brush anymore. But this, in stick form, you just kind of, you put it on, and then I just dab it a couple of times with my Real Technique sponge, and it blends itself out. Like, it's so smooth and so beautiful, and I can even go down the sides of my nose and underneath and then do my forehead, and it blends so easily, and it's so nice, and it makes me want to try all of the Fenty Beauty matchsticks, but like this one especially, like I want to like yell on the rooftops to every tell person I know, be like, if you want to contour, use this, because like the cream contour kit is so extra. I love that I have it. I will never not want to have it. It's especially great in Halloween when I do different things. Uh, but for like a real person every day, this is amazing, and I love this. So if you want to contour, it's like thirty bucks, but I think. But like I said, I really wanted to do like a Tuesday review on it, and I've been comparing the amount of product in here compared to other ones. And there are some that are comparable, like if you get the Kim Kardashian contour sticks, they're just a single, not the double-ended one. It's around the same, but some of the drugstore inexpensive uh, cream contour sticks that almost always have the highlighter on the end that no one ever uses, you get like a quarter of the product that you get in this. 
So it's it's crazy value in comparison, and I just really like it. And I I wish I had more Fenty Beauty things, you know. I I uh. So now I am also a huge fan of drugstore mascaras. I just like them. There's so many that are good, but I decided to blur a couple of months ago, and I bought the Milk Makeup Kush mascara, and I like this mascara a lot. I don't know that I like it enough to spend the money again. I really had to talk myself into it. But here's some of the things that I like about it. A, I like the formula because it's thick and like just wet enough. Like I always had the issue that my eyes are so naturally watery that, you know, I'm gonna blink right after I put my mascara on and I'm gonna get it all over my face if it's too wet. But also if the mascara formula is too dry, it's gonna flake into my eyes and make them water even more and then it's gonna smudge, it's a mess. This is just wet enough that it goes on perfectly, but it doesn't smudge and it doesn't flake on me. I feel like the brush is perfect as well because it's like just fat enough that I don't feel like I really have to find every individual hair and do it. Like it grabs them all pretty well by itself, but I'm also not making a mess on my eyelids or whatever like I often do. And I can do my bottom lashes with it, like, and it's fluffy, but not too fluffy. Like, I'm not gonna poke myself in the eye with it by accident. And something I never really thought of until I had this mascara that I really like is this is a really weighty package. Like, this mascara tube is sort of heavy. In a, like, not actually heavy, but heavy for a mascara tube. And I really like it. Like, it's really, it feels fancy. And I like that. You know, if I'm gonna spend that much money on a mascara anyway, it should feel fancy. And as someone who has had Dior mascaras, they never felt as fancy as this one does. Not on my eyes and not in actual package weight, so I prefer this one, just saying. I think I said it in my no foundation get ready with me that I uploaded a little while ago, but I really feel like Urban Decay did themselves a disservice by launching all their Vice stuff at once because by launching all their Vice lipsticks and lip liners and whatever at the same time, like, it was overwhelming and no one was really able to absorb the colors individually. It was just like, oh, look at this massive collection. Okay, thank you, next. And so it took me trying to find like a really nice pinky nude, like, literally going to Sephora and swatching a whole bunch of them to realize that there are some really beautiful shades within that line and I really want a whole bunch of them to be honest. And they feel like a really great classic lipstick formula, especially if you go for like the comfort mattes. They're very akin to like your classic MAC lipstick of course, except for cruelty free, so better. And I just think they're a really nice bullet lipstick. Like we got so into liquid lipsticks for a while there that we forgot how nice bullet lipsticks are. But these are amazing. So I'm gonna swatch all three of them for you. The one that I'm wearing on my lips right now is Backtalk. I'm wearing it under the Fenty Gloss Balm. So this one is great. I wanted to buy this one, uh, and I swore I talked myself out a bit, but then Shelby had it, and she brought it to work to let me try it, and, uh, well, now I own it. So, so that's Backtalk. This one is called Hideaway. This is the one that I didn't realize I had bought. I thought I bought a different one, but I bought this one. So Hideaway and Backtalk are very similar, but Hideaway has more of a, a redness to it, whereas Backtalk is more of that mauvey blue based pink. And then the last one I have is called Sheer Liar. This one is in the Sheer formula, and I believe the other two are Comfort Mats. Yeah, so this one is, as you can tell, much sheer, much more casual. This is the kind of lipstick that if I was going somewhere, but I didn't want to like, I didn't feel like I needed to look nice, but I wanted to have a lip color on, like. I would probably just throw sheer lighter in my purse because I feel like I could apply it without a mirror because it's sheer but pretty and it's not quite so much of a strong matte finish as the other one. So those are the three lipsticks I have. They have a couple of other ones that I want, but then I'm afraid if I buy them, I'm not going to be able to stop. So yeah, if you're in the market for like a good bullet lipstick, as far as Sephora lipsticks go, Urban Decay are on the cheaper side and they have a surprisingly really great color selection. You can find almost any nude in any undertone you want and they're, they're probably going to have it and probably in a di couple of different finishes. So, you know, don't overlook them. And last but not least as far as makeup is concerned, this is the Sephora collection. What's it called? Matte Perfection Powder Foundation. So when I went to Sephora the same day I bought Backtalk actually, I wanted to find a powder foundation because all I really have are loose powders right now. I've been doing the a uh, ColourPop no filter on my whole face and I really wanted a powder foundation because I'm not really wearing um what's the word <laughs> I'm not really wearing foundation anymore because my skin has been doing so much better I have three zits down here right now as I say that but that hasn't happened in a while and so I went to Sephora and I touched all of the actual physical powder foundation testers they had and I was surprised by how rough a lot of them were like I would touch them like maybe it was just the samples had been like grossed 
but I touched a lot of them and they didn't, like, they felt really dry and I didn't like how they looked even just swatched on my hands. And then, believe it or not, I got to the Sephora collection one and it was the softest. And so I swatched it on my hands. This shade is 12 Fair Warm and it's actually surprisingly way too dark for me if I put it on with a flat top dense brush and I try to, like, really get some coverage. It's way too dark for me. It looks borderline orange. But if I take just, like, a fluffier brush and I just kind of fluff it around the outsides of my face, it works, and it kind of brings some life to my face because it is that warm undertone. So this is the cheapest powder foundation that I could find in Sephora because it's Sephora collection. So it was only $25, and it's pretty nice, actually, and I like that it magnetizes close. I've mentioned in this video a number of times how my skin has been doing better, but I haven't told you why. So I went to put an order through on The Ordinary because I was running out of a bunch of my stuff, and I saw this product. This is the, oh, I can't ever say it, Nias... Niacinamide, that's what it's called. Ni niacinamide 10% and zinc oxide 1%. And I saw this and it said it was for acne, but it also said that it would be good for like really deep, like cystic acne, which is what I get a lot of the time. I seldom get zits that actually come to the front and make like a white head. They're usually just so deep in my skin and I can feel them and they hurt, but you can't really see them. You can maybe tell that that whole section of my face is a little bit swollen, but that's about it. So it's, it's even less about like, look and more about comfort. So I saw this and I picked it up and I decided to try it and I've been trying it for about a month now for pretty much all of April and so far so good. I use this every night before I put on a moisturizer and I really do feel like the amount of like big cystic acne that I've gotten has super decreased. I do notice that my skin especially around my mouth like I mentioned has been going through kind of like a purge phase if you will. I don't know if that's because of this or because of something else but like I have a lot of little spots coming forward now that I knew were there before but they were just kind of high you know you know like when you've got a, a pore or something and you know it's gonna be a zit but you just don't know when that's what's been happening and they've been all coming forward so I'm gonna say maybe this is helping my skin purge I'm not totally sure but all I noticed is that I have less big cystic painful acne bumps and if that's why I'm sold so now as far as like TV and movies and stuff go, I did see two movies in theaters this month. No, neither of them was Endgame. I didn't see Endgame because unpopular, unpopular life. I haven't seen any Marvel movies in theaters. And I've only seen like two or three Marvel movies actually. Not because I don't want to, I just wasn't excited. Like it took Marvel so long to give us like a, like a different character. Like the fact that Captain Marvel was their last movie that came out before Endgame. Like their female lead was the last movie before Endgame. Like I didn't care about Iron Man. I ended up seeing Winter Soldier but like I watched it on TV with my dad or something I think. And then I saw the second Thor at some point as well and I know I've seen Guardians of the Galaxy because I think I watched it with my mom but that's it. I haven't seen any of the other movies. So... <laughs> I'm going to watch them all at some point. At some point, I will watch. I will sit down and I will watch them all and I will go through it, but I haven't seen Endgame. But I did see Us uh, by Jordan Peele. That movie was really good. I went to see it by myself because no one would see it with me. And it's a really interesting concept. And I haven't seen Get Out yet. I think it goes on Netflix this week, but I haven't seen Get Out. So I, I'm unfamiliar with how Jordan Peele tells a story. I remember him from back in that TV. So I was like, I wonder how this is going to go. But he has a really cool way of like intermingling and, and combining a story in a way that is really full and fleshed out. It doesn't leave any stone unturned. It doesn't leave any loose ends at the end. I hate it when a movie ends and there was like a shot or something throughout the movie that you thought would be significant and then it ended up be, like meaning nothing. I hate that. Like if you're make every moment matter is what I've always thought when it comes to filmmaking. And you did a really great job of that. I didn't find it particularly scary but I really, really, really enjoyed it. And then Sam and I, like two days later, went to see Pet Cemetery. And Pet Cemetery was more of like your typical cheesy horror movie. It was definitely less smart than us. Um, but I, I still enjoyed it. It's still Pet Cemetery. I still liked it. You know, it's it's another Stephen King movie. I liked it. I don't know. Us is a movie that you sit down and you watch and you absorb the story. Pet Cemetery is just like a scary movie that I put on in the background, you know? I finished watching all of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. Like I said before, I had to get past that episode with the sleep demon because I really didn't enjoy that one. But once I got through that, you know, we were good after that. And I really enjoyed it. I didn't expect to, but it was fun. I'm really into watching Game of Thrones since it came back. I won't give you any spoilers, don't worry. 
Uh, even though I think it's been like nearly a week since the Battle of Winterfell aired when I'm posting this, but I still won't spoil anything. It was a decent episode. I mean, I liked it. It was really good, but I don't like that I went into it knowing that it has been compared to the Battle of Helm's Deep, which is one of my favorite sections of movie ever is the Battle of Helm's Deep in Lord of the Rings Two Towers. So I feel like I already had like a bitter taste going into it because I was like, Nothing can be better than Helm's Deep. And uh, it wasn't better than Helm's Deep. It was pretty good. Didn't quite get from it what I was hoping or what I wanted we would get from it, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm not but her. I'm excited to see where the rest of the season goes, but, you know, no Helm's Deep. Can anything be Helm's Deep without Gimli, seriously? And yeah, I think that's about everything I want to mention in this video. What did you love in the month of April? Make sure you let me know in the comments below so that I can check it out, because if you loved it, Odds are I'm going to love it too, and I'm always in the market for new stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and you subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed already, and I will see you next time.